My name is Douglas Jackson. I'm the Assistant General Manager here at FNSS. Welcome to our stand at IDEF 2021. What I'd like to talk to you today about is two of our newest vehicles. One of them is our Shadow Rider concept, our family of vehicles, uh, autonomous vehicles, and I'll talk to you about the technology behind that. The second one that I would like to focus on is the evolution of our PARS wheeled vehicles, and I will talk to you about the PASS 4 8x8 that we have on the stand today. FNSS has a long history of product evolution. The PARS vehicle that we'll see today is a good example of that. But we'll introduce the PASS 4 to you, and as the name uh, implies, it's the fourth generation of wheeled vehicles in a reasonably short period of time for a defence company. The other product that we'll look at, the Shadow Rider, is an example of FNSS following or even leading the trends uh, in the market. It's our heavy autonomous vehicle and this will be aimed at the future needs of uh, land forces. So the idea of this vehicle, the 6x6 configuration especially that you see next to us here, came about meeting the needs of the Turkish Special Forces. So it has very high mobility, it has very high production levels for its class of vehicle, almost MRAP in some of its abilities, uh, you could say. It also has a very large suite of technology sensors and things to help the troops in the battlefield. You can see with some of the sensor suites that you see on the roof of the vehicle. You will also see, interestingly, that it has twin self-defence weapons, remote controlled on the roof, which is quite unusual and is meeting the needs of the special forces in the Turkish land forces. So the 6x6, as I explained earlier, was developed for the uh, special forces in Turkey. So what we've done is we've taken uh, the technology that we developed here, especially in terms of protection, and turned it into an 8x8 configuration. So this builds both on the 6x6 that we saw earlier and it builds on the past three family of vehicles that we've delivered and we have in service with some customers. And this is looking at the future needs of Turkish land forces. Probably will be available in both 8x8 and 6x6 versions. And the model that you see behind me here has the 35mm remote turret on. This is going towards infantry fighting vehicle capabilities. It has the calibre of turret that you would expect to see on those vehicles and it also has a troop dismount section in the back. So the layout in this configuration will have eight dismounts. There will be a gunner position for the remote turret. It has the commander and the driver in the front of the vehicle for increased situational awareness. We're trying to increase the technology levels in our vehicles and drone connectivity and using drones for situational awareness is something that we're looking at as a technology development area at FNSS and it applies just as much to vehicles like the Shadow Rider where they need that connectivity because they're autonomous as the manned vehicles that we see behind us. That is currently in production. The vehicle is going through qualification and we expect the vehicle to enter service later this year. In terms of the 8x8 version, this is the vehicle that we will enter for the Turkish Land Forces SSB uh, test and trials program for their future requirements. This is the Shadow Rider, our autonomous vehicle concept, and not just concept, as you can see, this is a real vehicle behind us, equipped with a 25mm remote turret, and you can see some of the sensors on the vehicle that help the autonomy of the vehicle. This is something FNSS has been working on for a number of years. You may remember in IDEF two years ago, we showed the first iteration of the Shadow Rider, mostly in remote control concept. Now we're starting to add autonomy and develop our thinking in the autonomous world. Yes, our idea here is that there's no crew inside the vehicle. It can be optionally driven. You can put crew in the vehicle if you so chose, but the aim with the autonomy is to take the crew out of danger. So you put the vehicle in danger, but you don't put the crew in danger. This configuration has the turret on the top, which is the uh, combat configuration. The turret is not an autonomous turret. There is always a person in the loop controlling the turret remotely, even though they're not in the vehicle. This is obviously for safety reasons. But the vehicle itself can navigate terrain, it can navigate urban environments, so it avoids obstacles, it recognises its environment, and it has a return to base function. So once it's out in the field and you need the vehicle back, it will take itself back to base without humans interfering. We've taken an M113 chassis, and we've put the technology on top of an M113 chassis. There's two advantages to this. One, you have a proven mobility platform, so you don't have to worry about that. You can concentrate on the technology. Two, in terms of when we come to market this product, 
there's a lot of M113s in the world and we can offer this to our existing customer base as an upgrade to their existing fleets. You can use it in a variety of roles, so it has an extensive suite of sensors that feed information back to the command centre. You will get images, both daytime and thermal. You will get the LiDAR kind of images, so the radar images from what the vehicle is seeing. So there's a lot of information coming back to base around what's happening with the vehicle. And then depending on the configuration of the vehicle, that helps you make the decisions in the mission. So the drone that we saw on the past vehicle integrates very well into this, and in fact we've integrated drones in the rear of this, so it carries its own drone that it can launch and recover itself and it gives increased situational awareness in the battlefield. So in simple terms you could control this with one person. I would envisage armies would want to control it with two people. One for the vehicle, two for whatever the mission requirement is, but that's down to the operational requirements from the armies I would say.